Oh, well, Sameh, welcome to TEDx Laval Road. Thanks. You no, know, I need to tell you something from on behalf of the complete team here. We are super excited to have someone as young as 15 years old on stage. Uh, it's a and, pleasure and to be here. And Thank I you believe for everyone me. here is, you know, waiting to listen to you now. <laughs> Thanks a lot. It's a pleasure to be here. Really honored. Right. So, uh, as you all saw the video before, we all know Sameh as this, you know, wonder kid from Bangalore who made it to the finals of the Breakthrough Junior Challenge. You know, I'm sure everyone here is curious. Why don't you tell us more about you, who Samai Gaudika really is? Well, Wonder Kid, that almost sounds like the superhero from my breakthrough video. Far from it though, I'm a regular 15-year-old boy with the usual challenges of school, exams, friends, and gadgets. And if you ask my parents, they'll say they don't even know which Samai will show up at any given time. But I tell them that being predictable is boring and that they should thank me for being their daily dose of entertainment. I love reading books, especially biographies, and of course, I love making YouTube videos. <laughs> that's, that's a really interesting description, you know. So the video that we just show, uh, saw, you know, um, the Breakthrough Junior Challenge video, yes. tell us more about it, what was it all about? Yeah, so this Breakthrough Junior Challenge is a global competition where people is, are asked to submit videos in the field of science. So students aged 13 to 18 are invited to submit original videos in the field of physics, life sciences, and mathematics. And the key is to communicate a complex topic in an en engaging and illuminating manner. And the winner, the winner gets a prestigious scholarship in a glittering ceremony in Los Angeles. And I've always wanted to meet Mark Zuckerberg in person, but for some reason he just doesn't seem to take my phone calls. So this looks like the only way to do it. Uh, your entry for the challenge was about autophagy, you know. So tell us, how did you come about with this concept and how did autophagy as an idea strike you? And I'm sure none of us, in fact, knew what autophagy was before we saw this video. So some of my family members suffer from neurological diseases, and this is how I came across autophagy. It is a fascinating self-cleansing process which goes on in every cell of our body. And in fact, oh, you heard that there, but I'll repeat it. The 2016 Nobel Prize in Medicine was awarded to Mr. Yoshinori Yoshimi for this process. And it is the science behind fasting as well. And this was a big surprise to me, it's because this seemingly new discovery has ancient roots in Indian traditions. So let me give you an analogy to explain how this really happens. Let's assume that our body is a house and autophagy is a vacuum cleaner inside it. So every day when dust accumulates inside our house, that le the vacuum cleaner swings into action and takes care of it. Similarly, autophagy takes care of the waste inside our own body. Wow, I think nobody could have explained it as simple manner as you did right now. So that's what, you know, what's very interesting about this video. The entire process of autophagy, which is like a completely scientific complex phenomenon, is explained in, through storytelling, you know. So you tell us, how did you plan this complete video and what process did you follow? Right. So as I deep dived into autophagy, I realized it is a rather complex and, to be honest, boring process. But I was going through a kind of writer's block and trying to make it more interesting when Spider-Man came to my rescue, uh, almost literally. I had gone to watch the new Spider-Man movie with a few of my friends when suddenly in the middle, it all popped up. Chase, villains, superhero. And I got so excited that I went to the reception, borrowed a piece of paper, and started jotting down points right there. And my friends thought I had gone crazy. I'm sure you do too. Um, then uh, for the next part, for the execution part of it, it had to be under three minutes. So I scripted the exact dialogues before going to shooting. And as for shooting, I used the stop motion animation technique, which is taking hundreds of pictures and stitching it all together. I used my 11-year-old sister, Sia, as a guinea pig to see whether it held her attention as well. And at the end of it, it went through many iterations, and even until the last day of submission, I was tinkering with it, and now it turned out what it is. <laughs> you know, well, talk about superheroes, and I'm sure Spider-Man is your favorite superhero. Yeah, um, yeah so, so the video, you know, is all about storytelling, how you have done it, you know, the complete video. So how do you think, you know, storytelling can help us, probably school students, to understand science and complex subjects better? I believe how information is imparted makes a tremendous impact on its assimilation. Like you said, I have friends who watch YouTube videos on educational topics at home, but fall asleep on the same topics, topics in class. And even grown-ups who watch my video on autophagy said that they appreciated the topic much better now. So logically, I think it makes sense to use storytelling to convey topics of education. But somehow it is assumed 
that if teaching is not done in a serious environment, it is not considered as education. Why does learning have to be through rote-based remembrance? Why can't it be through humor or adventure or through experiential and visual understandings? And I believe with the democratization of technology, we have a chance to reinvent this. I have an idea for a business as well. And now that all of you are here, you can be a part of it too. It would involve using a crowdsource model of creating a catalog of comic book based topics, educational topics, involving a whole range of STEM topics, as I said. A, a marketplace like Amazon, just for this genre, could be the way to reach the market. A subscription based model uh, to, to students, teachers, libraries, parents, etc., could be a way to generate revenue as well. Well, that's a very, very valid point, Samay. You know, I hope educators here are taking note how to make learning more fun for students. And yeah, I believe you might find some investors for your idea yeah, as well. Yeah, if any of you are interested, call me. <laughs> you know, considering there are 28 other finalists, uh, semi-finalists and finalists from other countries, how did you go about getting votes for your video and in reaching out to the public, you know, considering you won the popular vote award? 11,000 people registered and 3,000 videos were submitted. 29 videos were shortlisted for the semi-finals. Out of that, just one person who won the global popular vote would go directly to the finals. So I guess you could say, so I guess you could say stakes were high. The first thing that I did was send the video to all my family and friends because I knew I could count on them for votes. I strategized with my parents on how to promote the video better. I joined various Facebook communities such as science and biological groups and asked them to vote as well. And after a few days, I got a lot of print and media coverage. So that helped a lot too. But by far, the most fun part was my cousins and my sister in Delhi going to each house, just going, ringing the bell and canvassing for votes. And they must have got me at least 1,000 votes alone. What touched me the most was the kindness shown to me by strangers who didn't even know me, but took up this project aggressively and sent this to their network. And I'm really grateful for that. Well, uh, Samay, I have a very interesting question for you. Now that you won the Popular Vote Award, has life changed for you? Have you become like a you know, celebrity of sorts among your friends? I'm devastated that I still haven't become a celebrity. <laughs> my life still revolves around the upcoming board exams, getting lectured by my parents, fighting with my sister, cleaning my room. The list remains the same. I haven't even given out autographs yet. So if you could all line up outside after my session, that'll be great. You know what, Samay? Let's do it now. I'll be the first one to get your autograph. You know, why don't you send an autograph for me? Right, one out of one million, hopefully everyone. Oh, there, there. For you. I've got my autograph, <laughs> and I'm going to you know, keep it treasured for long. Thank you so much, Samay. Um, so, yeah, moving on from the, the Breakthrough Challenge, yeah. I believe you are selected for the Launch Entrepreneurship Program by MIT. Tell us more about this. This was by far one of the best experiences of my life. It was an intense 30-day, 10-hour-per-day summer program in Boston. We were taught how to go about starting a company and sustaining it. It was experiential learning at its best. We went outside our comfort zone almost every single day. And even though the learnings were really good, equally important, I felt, were the bonds that I created with my classmates over there. Even though we're all from different parts of the world, we still keep in touch even today. And one funny part, though, at the beginning of the program, I was calling my parents, asking them whether I could come home right then because it was that tough. But by the end of it, I was praying that it would never end, and my parents were left wondering whether I would ever come home at all. <laughs> so Samay, we believe you, know, you have utilized some of the learnings from this program, and you started this company called Sirona Security. So what does this company do, and what, what is it all about? In India, package delivery men come to your house and make sure you receive the package personally. For example, if you're not there when Amazon comes, they'll take it back and try again some other time. However, in US, package delivery companies simply leave it outside your house. And this leads to a lot of package theft. And we are a company looking to devise a solution to this issue. That's pretty interesting. Elon Musk is your role model, right? So if you had to steal one thing from his life, what would it be? In a nutshell, I guess, dream big and reach for the moon. But as Elon Musk would probably say, dream big and reach for Mars. Uh, I have another role model as well called Blake Mykoski, the founder of Tom Shoes. This company is based on the premise that for every pair of shoes they sell, they donate a pair to the needy children. 
and till date they have donated a staggering 60 million pairs of shoes wow that's the yeah that's great even now I want to start a company which is a normal for-profit company, but at the same time has, a, has the same social impact as Blake and Tom Shoes does. Right, so Samay, you know, tell us what's next for you. What's your future aspiration? And we know you're still a kid, a student, but then what's your plans for the future? With the advancements of science and technology, the future looks really interesting and exciting. If I was to do a mind map of my thinking, I guess some big bubbles would be how, to, how can the intersection of data science and neuroscience solve some big health problems? Another one is how can, let's see, one more. How can, how can I create a self-sustainable business of comic book and video-based education? And this one is really important. How do I pass it on? The kindness shown to me during the break Breakthrough Jury and Challenge popular vote and I believe this one has been in my mind every day, 24 hours a day. As a New Year's gift, how do I get my parents to buy me a new drone? Well, I hope your parents buy you a new drone after this talk, you know. Ladies and gentlemen, Samaya Gothika. Thank you so much, Samaya, and we wish you all the best Thanks. for the future. Thank you.